Okay, so through the trees there, you just about see it. It's the nuclear reactor, where just about right bang in the middle of that, there is a stable criticality, which is throwing off all of these neutrons, which we're going to use for science. And just so you know exactly where you are, you're in my room. So, okay, so one of the really cool things about that reactor over there is it's one of the few places in the whole of science where all four of the fundamental forces that we know about are really relevant. I mean, the first one is, is the strong force. That's what holds the nuclei together. And that's what you need to understand if uh, you want to understand how these things are going to break apart, throw off various fragments, how they're going to be captured by other uh, nuclei. And you need to understand all of that to maintain the stable criticality over there. Now, one of the particles that these things throw off is the neutron, which we're primarily going to use for science here. But there are people here who just study the neutrons themselves. And neutrons themselves are fairly unstable. They've only got a half-life of about 10 minutes, uh, whereupon they, when, when they decay, they decay into a proton, electron, antineutrino, and quite a bit of energy. Um, but, and when they do that, that happens via the, the weak or the electroweak force. That's the second of the forces. The third force is gravity. And gravity is, it enters into very little science because it's just this very weak background force on Earth. Um, it's useful for keeping coffee in cups, chemicals in beakers and the such like, but it doesn't really do much. Um, where is they use it here in a really quite ingenious fashion. So you, these, these scientists that are interested in just studying the neutron, they want to study static neutrons. Right? If they're moving, that changes their property properties. It's a sort of mm, relativity type thing. Um, so you want to actually get your static neutron. Well, how do you stop a neutron? They've got no charge. You can't stop them by, force, um, by uh, electromagnetic fields. So how do you stop them? And the way that they've come up with is really quite clever. Um, you get a cold source which is throwing off all of these neutrons, and of course when those neutrons go up in the air, uh, in a vacuum tube of course, um, they're just like any other object in, in a gravitational force field. They, they go up, they slow down, they slow down, and they're stationary at the top, and then they start falling down the other side. And so there's this big metal tube that comes out the top of the reactor in this rather nice parabola. And it's when the neutrons get to the top, they're static, and that's when they do all of their science on them. Um, and then, of course, the fourth force is the electromagnetic force, and that's what holds the electrons to the nuclei and determines how those atoms stick together to form molecules. Um, and one of those sets of the molecules, of course, the biomolecules, which make up us. And it's, it's that that I'm primarily here to study. And so um, the way that we'll do that is we'll get some samples, which are in the boxes behind me. We'll fire the neutrons through them. And by the way, the neutrons actually scatter we'll actually be able to tell something about the atomic properties of biomolecules.